Caesar. The crowd pleaser. If you need to pick me up, ladies, we gon' change your demeanor. Caesar. The crowd pleaser. We gon' do a little dance, we gon' make the naysayers believe us. Hey girl, had a long day, you tired from work. Throw me some dollars and I remove my shirt. You can touch me too, these are the perks. Free yourself, lose your mind and go berserk. Uh huh, and go berserk. Uh huh, and go berserk. Uh huh, and go berserk. Make way for the bad guy. What is up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Crowd Pleaser, the podcast that brings you the inside scoop on what it takes to be a male entertainer in today's age. I'm your host, Caesar the Crowd Pleaser, and with me this week, I have a returning co host. He's also been a star on my reality show, which you can check out the complete season one on YouTube, Caesar LaBear. Uh, search it there. It's the Crowd Pleaser Contest. I recently had a chance to share the stage yet again with him this past weekend, which we'll go ahead and talk about later. But I want to welcome on the show, Mandingo Jones. How you doing, Mandingo? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. It is a Friday night. We both got off work and we decided to get together and record a podcast and today is episode 32 which we'll be talking about the competitiveness that happens within the locker room of a male entertainment um shoot locker room i guess pretty much you know a ladies club so uh yeah we'll be discussing that but first i want to go ahead and mention la bear dallas it is my home station Open Wednesday to Sunday, 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. You have any kind of celebration, you just need to relax and de-stress from your day, definitely come out. We have over 15 different entertainers of all shapes and sizes putting on a phenomenal show for you. Next is Hard Bodies Ladies Club, where Mandingo works at. Go ahead and break it down for us, Mandingo. Ladies, Hard Bodies Ladies Club in San Antonio, 2726 North St. Mary's. We're open Wednesday through Sunday. Uh, Sundays were open uh, 8.30 till 12. Uh, uh, Wednesdays and Sundays were open 8.30 till 12. Um, the rest of the week were open from about 8 o'clock till uh, 2. Till two. So Wednesday through Sunday, you can come on out and check us out at uh, downtown San Antonio. Heck yeah, man. That's what it's about. If you ladies are traveling anytime, you're more than welcome to swing by. Also, if you know any good looking dudes that are interested in making some extra money or they just like being in show business, definitely check out our amateur nights. LaBear has our amateur night every Thursday night, roughly about show up about 10, 1030. Watch the show for a little bit. Once we get all the guys together, we go ahead and throw them up on stage and test their luck. Uh, Mandingo, you guys have an uh, amateur night as well, correct? Uh, we do occasionally, but we definitely are looking for new recruits, guys who are um, looking to break into something new and uh, try out the stage. So we're very welcoming of new guys. We try to help people um, move forward and become the best that they can be. It's really a big group effort over here at our club. So, you know what I'm saying? Just become part of the culture, I guess. But, yeah, we do need a few new guys. So, ladies, if you do know anyone – Send them by, and we'll take care of them. Awesome. Excellent. All right. And we have my Patreon, patreon.com backslash crowd pleaser. This is a place where people can give back to the creators to put out the content. Uh, I have all kinds of behind-the-scenes things on there from <coughs> the photo shoots, from future acts that are coming up. You guys get early releases of things like the podcast as well as upcoming shows and whatnot. Definitely want to say thank you to all my patrons out there. Really, it helps me. Uh, showing your appreciation definitely helps me put out more content and keep pushing it because at the end of the day, that's what this show is here for. And yeah, so thank you. Uh, once again, the show will always be free for everyone to listen to, so you can share it with whoever you like. But if you want to give back a little something, it is really appreciated. There's absolutely no commitment whatsoever. And finally, I want to go ahead and give some shout outs to Kylie and amazing both rating us on itunes appreciate that giving us the five star rating and a comment by all means keep sharing the podcast whether it's on itunes soundcloud or youtube share it let people know what's going on it's very (coughs) insightful i have a couples uh episode two-part episode 
It has wives and husbands on here and boyfriends. Definitely discussing why people go to LeBear. It kind of will help you out. Uh, you know, share it. And you'll find out that it might be a little easier to get people to come out and see what we're all about. All right. Well, that's everything. So, Mandingo. Uh, what up? Today we're going to be talking about the pretty much something that you'll see in any environment where there is some type of competition or ability to brag or strive for success when you're dealing with a bunch of a type people and that is the natural mm-hmm. competitiveness amongst each other whether it's for a dance off or not just a night to night and you know i feel like it happens in any locker room any time at all someone's gonna say something whether it is in a military locker room they talk about who's the best shot is or some kind of gym locker room they talk about who could lift the most or do the most reps uh sporting events same thing We're some no sort different. of some sort of ego contest in one way shape or form yeah very true very true yeah and i feel like it's actually a healthy thing because it forces everyone that wants to be better to be better and it gives them something to strive for even if it is in a playful manner where we just kind of rip on each other so first let's go ahead and just talk about basic like locker room bragging rights is the first thing that people start to build competitiveness right because everyone has those nights where you know you feel like you're king of the world when you go to the back of the locker room either everyone's super in love with you and you're making a ton of money or you just rocked a competition or something like that and you know, we might joke around, but that stays with. I know every time someone wants to strip off for us, we're always like, oh, you know, the sexiest man in Texas. And uh, <laughs> and you get a little bit of, of bragging rights with that, right? Yeah, you do. <clears throat> um, first and foremost, that competitive nature is typically going to be there, as you said, in the locker room. So I also think it's just... Uh, <laughs> A healthy thing that you guys in the locker room do. It's just very apparent that that actually kind of fuels the desire to be better. You know what I'm saying? A little competition in between people. So um, I think that like when it comes down to bragging rights, it just depends on what you really care about. You know what I'm saying? Because there are people who as much as we care about our show, not everyone who is in a locker room with us cares about our show that much. They care more so about like uh, literally like maybe only making money or they care about um, whatever else. Because some guys, as you know, somehow they progress through the industry and they don't make like, you know, super great shows. So the competition doesn't always lie necessarily on having the best show. Strip offs, however, when you know you have that particular competition towards just the show itself, it can be pretty. It can be pretty uh, um, intense. Yeah, it's very consuming. It's a very consuming thing to be a part of because you have all these groups of people. Well, you have this one group of people in a locker room who are co-workers and friends with each other who joke around with each other all day and uh, hang out outside of work occasionally, rehearse together, do all these things, and then now you're pitted against each other in competition. uh, Competitions that... Competitions in which we are all supposed to be able to specialize in. Like, yeah, dancing is or uh male dancing overall there's multiple uh fractions to make it whole there's the show there's being able to communicate with women well there's the confidence there's all kinds of different things that make it um uh, uh one whole experience but the competition aspect of a strip off is a very consuming and a very like unique feeling of competitiveness because you are now also helping your friends try to beat you. Like you have to help them in their acts. Yep. You, like you're you you're assisting. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> it's one of those fine lines where you're sitting here competing against the people in your club and sometimes from other clubs as well to find out who is the best of the best, who can do their job the best, who has the best body, who has the best choreography. 
And the ironic thing of that is even though, like you said, we're pitted against each other, it ends up being those same people that you're up against are the ones that end up helping you in your act and you helping them in their act. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sure you and Juice are two of the top runners or front runners for most competitions and you guys are in both each other's acts. Same thing with Jason and Liam and myself um, in, our, in my club where I can almost count on those two guys to always help me in any show I'm doing. Uh, right. And I'm helping. I mean, heck, I choreographed Jason's last routine for the last two strip offs, and I was in the show with him, and he was in mine. So it's 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 that weird dynamic that I feel like you only get here. You know, mm-hmm. let's let's use like wrestling for example. Sure, a you know a team, a wrestling team, they wrestle against each other and whatnot. But when they go to the competition, each person has their own weight class, and they wrestle against someone from an entirely different team. Our, our, you know, strip offs and dance offs, like the guys that you're trying to beat, are also the guys that are helping you in your show. So it's really an interesting dynamic, I think, where you want to help your guy do the best, and you're going to help, you know, your friend do the best. But at the same time, you want to beat him. So yeah, of course you want to win. Uh, and it, it's that it also leads to another layer of motivation because. If you're, you're working on a routine and you're like, okay, well, all right, guys, come help me. This is what I have planned. And maybe a week later, the you know, let's say, for example, you and Juice. Juice starts putting together his routine. Not necessarily he was waiting on you, but just, you know, he took a little bit longer to figure out what he wanted to do. And you start helping him. Now you're like, man, I don't know. That's a pretty good show. I might have to step my game up some. And so <laughs> it's almost like a minor yeah. like arms race within the preparation for a strip off. <clears throat> it is definitely an arms race. There's no doubt about that. We talk about that to where we're sometimes looking at each other like Christian <laughs> Christian being the workaholic that he is, and Christian being a little bit of an overthinker because he's young. So he typically overthinks things. And when I say overthink, I don't mean overthink in the aspect of him just wanting his show to be the best that it can be. He overthinks too much of what he's going to compete with. At the end of the day, some people are just going to do what they're going to do, and you got to just go ball, you know what I'm saying? So he still has to kind of get that under his – he needs to kind of ingrain that into his mentality. But, <laughs> like, he'll, <laughs> he'll come up and he'll be like, so – he whenever he says something like that, <laughs> you know he's either going to ask you how his show looked or what you're up to. So he came up to me. He was like, "Hey, uh, so are you, um, you know, that one act you didn't do in December? Are you uh, uh, twiddling his thumbs and whatnot? Are you uh, planning on doing it in May?" And I was like, "Maybe, maybe I am." You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a poking at each other. Like he's over here coming trying to find out how much she's going to have to give to actually be able to compete and or win. Yeah, I kind of test the waters thing. And I understand that too because sometimes <clears throat> I found myself and other people, you know, hey, man, are you doing anything for the strip off? Oh, no, nah, I'm just going to do the same old act I've always done and kind of keep it hush-hush. And then like on the side, you're like, hey, man, can you help me? Like I don't want to yeah. practice in the club. I want to still hear it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, awesome. No one must know. Yeah pull the dj aside hey man if you could not play these three songs for the next like month and a half for me i really appreciate it and, it's uh, hard to do that at my club everybody wants to nab at your songs hey you haven't used this in a while no i have a reason why i'm not using it just wait the, <laughs> it's uh, hard to, you're fighting off hungry piranha yeah you're doing all kinds of stuff yeah no joke i mean you know you always want to have the hottest tunes so as soon as someone's like hey man you don't play this anymore you mind if i jump on it be like no there's a reason you got starting right on mine. I mean, oh, no, it's just in a different mix. I just forgot. I'll play it. It's cool. You know, you want to lead them on. You're working on a little something. But it's funny that you mentioned Christian because it's one of the things that I feel definitely helps the up-and-coming entertainers is when they see the competitiveness and the passion that the veterans have for certain things, a show, an event, a birthday, or something like that. It it creates that hype and that importance of it where it motivates them. If they're sitting there with a walkout act that every new guy has for the first couple of months and they see the veterans, hey, man, this strip-off's coming off. I want to bring it. I'm going to put together an awesome show. 
and they see that it inspires them to want to do better because they understand that they could be making money they could be making good money or they could be making great money and so they want to be a part of the action they don't want to be left out and so through that of people being like oh man we know so and so is going to take this trip off again because they always do playfully you know kind of bantering back and forth then Mm -hmm. they see like oh man this is a big deal and so they kind of jump in on it even if it is just in the background until they can step up much like how christian did and how liam and some of the other new guys in our clubs uh did that you know they kind of waited in the shadows and when we made things a big deal they wanted to be a part of that because what alpha male wouldn't want to i mean everything you said makes perfect sense (laughs) <laughs> oh gosh darn it man disagree with me darn it this is a discussion all right I'll i mean you. i i don't disagree with you um that was some i mean well christian see you also have to be careful too because if your passion grows too quickly you can become a little bit overzealous in certain areas that you actually need to take slower take your time with you know what i'm saying or, or does you- that or you run into the problem of how are you going to top this? Oh, man. Which, Don't even talk about that problem. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you sit there and you make every show bigger and better than the last. And after about five or six shows, you're starting to run out of ideas and ways to make that happen yeah. at a strip club. You're like, what What are you going to do? That's what you, you're thinking to yourself. Like, what are you really going to do next, Mandingo Jones? What's next? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it just... It makes you kind of be like, man, well, what's this? Well, has it already been done? Hmm. Well, can I even do that here? Like that's, and then it just starts to be, and then and you somehow find a way to do it. And then you're back again and the like, what's next? Yep. Well, and the thing right is, is that half the time you're competing with yourself, but then, like we said, it's a fever. It, it's one of those things like it's an arms race. So not only are you trying to top the last thing you did, but what happens if someone brings something even bigger than what you did? Now you have to top that as well. And so That's it true. just kind of stacks. And you really would like to reset the clock and be like, okay, you know, everyone's got to bring a new act. Everyone's got to come up with something new and stuff like that. But it just doesn't happen because you just you don't, remember. Yeah, you, you never have the time to – if somebody's all of a sudden – Doing something, you're like, oh, God, you never have the time. All you can really do is slightly adjust what you're doing or just make sure you do it to the best of your ability. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Just yep. go do what you can because if you focus on doing what you can't do, you'll definitely forget how to do what you can. The One of the things I like, and it once again, people look at it and kind of take it as, oh, you know, it's just a measuring contest and stuff like that. It's the fact that we kind of, we rip on each other and at the same time we brag on each other about physique. And it's a great thing because it really, like, I mean, I get it. We get plenty of insecurities going up on stage and watching the way women react to us. But at the same time, I feel like the banter goes back and forth in enough negative and positive ways that we have a way of backhanded uh, complimenting each other. Mm-hmm. And, and so it forces us all to keep that physique. Everyone slacks for a little bit. No one can diet and train hard year round. So everyone slacks. Mm-hmm. But when you see someone that's, let's say, getting ready for a photo shoot or getting ready for a physique show or even looking forward to a strip off, you, you see them start to lean out, start, start to gain weight. And uh, you just kind of like, you know, well, hey, if I had quads like so and so, then maybe I wouldn't mind, you know, going up on stage a little more or, or stuff like that. You know, random banter that we say, or guys just kind of bragging. It's like, well, you know, whenever you get guns this size, then maybe you'll, you, you know, you'll be able to lift up uh, two girls instead of one on stage. And we kind of mess with each other, but it's really that that check that makes sure that we're all at the very least above average guys. And so I really appreciate that because it keeps me personally from slacking off too much, mainly when I'm trying to gain weight where I'm like, okay, I got to eat as much as I can to get that protein in and grave size. But, you know, as soon as you kind of get used to that high in, high caloric intake diet and you start to see your abs kind of go or definition in your legs go a little bit and you see one of the younger dudes walk by just shredded, it, you know, it puts you in check again. You're like, uh, I, I might have to tone it back down after a month or two. You know what I'm saying? 
Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we all have a little bit of a slight body dysmorphia thing going for the most part because we are all like, for example, um, Suave will say something about, uh, no, 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 I will say something about my biceps because I consider my biceps to actually be one of my weaker points as far as gaining muscle mass. My biceps just don't really do that as quickly as my triceps. So um, I mentioned that to Suave, and he was just like, well, actually, you do have decent-sized biceps. You just have bigger shoulders, so it looks like they're smaller and they're long. It doesn't look that way to me because I'm looking on something and thinking that I need to improve it. Or other people are looking and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're fine the way it is. So there are a lot of cases where we might actually be good, as good as we need to be, but we'll never see that. You know what I'm saying? We're always going to see like, we're, we're always seeing like, oh, let's, um, I need to improve this. Maybe, okay, well, now this is, eh, maybe this, you know, eh, maybe this. And it just keeps going until you just really get tired of doing it, until you just don't live the lifestyle. Because it is a lifestyle. Being mm-hmm. able to be that way is a lifestyle. Like, that is a huge chunk of your life devoted to not just literally being in a gym, but also eating a certain way. Having a certain kind of mentality to be consistent about it as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is a lifestyle. That's just not... You know, it's not a hobby. Yeah, true story. There's a method of madness. I've, I've heard. Um, I've heard, actually a statement I've been hearing more and more lately is the most effective diet is the one that you're able to maintain. Um, that's true. the most efficient, and I, I believe it. And it's it's humorous that you say something like that because a lot of it is like passive as well. Like, don't get me wrong, we crack jokes of each other time and time again. You know, like the guys with the bigger legs will kind of rip on the guys with slightly leaner legs and stuff (laughs) like that you know it's not like their legs look bad or anything but you know who i'm talking about the guys with those t-rex quads are always gonna be like well maybe if you quit you know quit skipping leg day we wouldn't have this conversation uh obviously everyone kind of works out their yeah and then professionals but it's just kind of funny but it it really does motivate you i i had another guy on instance telling me on side stage uh or a story that two guys were on side stage and they saw another individual on main stage and they're like, man, I think he's bigger than both of us. And they're like, maybe, but I'm not sure. And it's one of those things where like, man, you know, the guy you're talking about is a 30 pounds lighter than either of you two. So it's, it's that dysmorphia you were talking about, but it's that, it's that drive to kind of be the best. And we're on, we're kind of checking ourselves doing that litmus test off of each other that causes us to maintain such great physiques where lesser men or not necessarily lesser men but people without that kind of constant motivation in close proximity won't be able to keep that lifestyle like you mentioned yeah um there's no there's no more of a competitive uh, battle than the one you're going to have with yourself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you involve other people, in all honesty, when you compete with other people, it's a little bit easier of a reference point to have when you're competing with someone else. Granted, you might not have the same body type as that person, but it's an easier reference to have because it's more... Beating someone else is always going to be more realistic than actually beating yourself because yourself is always going to want more out of you if you are still the um, if you are still if you still care as much, you're always going to want more out of yourself. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's like it's like, OK, like you're, you have, you're always like, going to be your greatest critic. Basically, is what I'm, well, I should have just said I should have just said that. But yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. So when you involve someone else, um, I I don't know exactly how it is in y'all's locker room. Our locker room, we've kind of toned back. We've kind of toned back on saying anything about bodies. And I think it's because we've come to realize 
that newer guys are harder to keep around when there's comments about people's bodies, whether they look good or not. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't know. They don't realize that when they step on that stage, they look a certain way that they don't see themselves as just yet because they're new. So anything like that, even if it's not directed at them, they they might think to themselves in their head, like, well, what if somebody said something about this? Just because they are insecure about it, but in all actuality, it doesn't look bad. They just want it to be better. Mm -hmm. So um, we actually were a little bit, we're actually a lot more, it was, it was a little bit more uh, aggressive in that fashion a few years back, but now in my locker room, at least, it's a lot more... Um, uh, well, there, there, there's no mention. There's not much mention of people's bodies at all, actually. Honestly, it's just straight like, let's go work. Shoot, man, I'll we, be honest with you. At this time and point, I'm pretty sure all the rookies have the best bodies out of everyone in our club. I think the really? the, the veterans kind of bring in, they get into that rotation of like kind of slacking off a little bit in the winter and then tightening back up in the spring and, and summer because we've just been dieting and working out for so long. You need those breaks versus our new guys. Are a lot younger they have that natural metabolism they they're fresh to working out so they end up having the best bodies and then once they start getting training and kind of figure out how to maintain it and dial it in they end up you know being some of the best bodies we have like right now I mean, don't get me wrong we have a fresh sure new guys it's like all right man you gotta start leaning out get those abs to show or you know you're a little lean a little lanky we need to put some weight on you but right now man i think our our batch of rookies are pretty strong when it comes to physique wise which I guess will lead me on to the next one, which is uh, popularity. And it, it might mm -hmm. not necessarily be popularity as that everyone in the club knows who you are and you can't walk to a side stage without saying hi to a bunch of people. I, this is mainly uh, kind of like the Friday and Saturday and like strip off events where the club is packed. Like, can you rock the house? Can you go on that stage and pack your stage and have – girls four rows deep and follow you onto stages two and three because you are just you're mr on it that night you know and uh a lot of it under a lot of it we understand that it is sometimes luck of the draw like you might just be someone's cup of tea that evening sometimes you're not you might be in a great mood and everyone's feeling off that vibe but you know it, it as playful as it might be, we still have a little of that. You know what I'm saying? They're like, hey, man, like I just had a packed stage. Like, good luck. Let's see how if we can get a couple of girls up. And it's all playful banter once again. I don't really think anyone goes out of the way to put someone down because we do understand that that's a tough thing to do. Everyone's, quote, you know, not to give out participation trophies, but everyone that just goes out on that stage and puts on a good show and dances their heart out, they, they've accomplished something, even if they don't pack the house. But, you know what I'm saying? We're guys. We like to mess with each other. And so it's really easy. And, and sometimes it goes the other way around, you know. Jason is a very popular guy because he's a very attractive, handsome human being. And so it's almost sure enough that dude can come back from a stripper gram at 1130, go up on stage, and just pack the house. And uh, there have been a couple guys, well, great, I got to follow Jason. So I guess I'll try to scrap up whatever money's left over. You know what I mean? And, uh, it, once again, it's banter, but I feel like it definitely motivates people to not sham. Um, you know what I mean? If you know, let's say, Ace Boogie, Brandon Breyers, and um, you know Adonis are all going to go up on stage back to back to back. Those guys all put on phenomenal shows. They're great entertainers. Yeah. So the last thing you want to do is be the fourth guy on that list and go out there and do like a Sunday night comedy walkout act and just bomb. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you got to be like, well, it's, it's that's a uh, that's prime time. Clearly, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Like, why would you? Like, it's very obvious you have to match the energy or match the charisma, as Randy would like to call it, match the charisma of the person on stage before you, with either the um, show that you're bringing. Or your raw ability, typically raw ability, that's got to be a real seasoned guy. But um, you're um, absolutely right. You cannot follow guys like that with some janky show. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you're absolutely right. That's, um, <sighs> what, how do you even react when you see something like that? Like, how does that make you feel? How does that make you feel? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the last thing you want to do is see guys rock stage from the DJ booth and go up there and feel like, oh, God, I am struggling to get a couple of people up there. That and- affects us all in a sense. And it depends on the show. But there are cases where you, like you said, you're going to go out there and no one's going to no one's regardless of what you do. We've all done it been to that point where we get on the stage and we do something amazing we in the zone but there's like three girls at the stage when there's been some guys who haven't done anything who's had pack stages like that's <laughs> sometimes that just happens you can't fight that energy sometimes it just shifts that way yeah yeah and uh you know and vice versa the inverse happens as well where you go on stage and maybe the two guys in front of you and you struggle on stage and then the guy that goes up after you and the guy that goes after him just start to get the crowd going and kind of get that energy and before you know it, it's prime time all of a sudden and you missed it because you weren't at that level <clears throat> that level of entertainment i try not to take those moments personally it's hard not to at first but i try not to take those moments personally because um i've seen it happen to everyone i've seen like I've seen it happen to like Martin. Martin's great entertainer. He's good looking. His abs are fucking, oops, excuse me. His abs are washboard. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he um he can dance. He's like come out before and I've seen him do something phenomenal and then like a whole bunch of girls get up and leave. But that's happened to everyone. That's happened to me. That's happened to Juice. It's happened to Christian. Sometimes, but the thing is, while you're on stage, a lot of times you have to kind of dial that out, not like block that out because um, you really don't want that. You really don't want that to be the time to where you feel like your ego has to take a hit. Because you still have a whole crowd, a group of people to entertain. Or whoever's in the building, you're still there to entertain them. If they're leaving, they're leaving. They could be leaving because they were only planning to be there till 10.30 or something. It doesn't always have to do with you, but I think um, a lot of times a seasoned entertainer needs to be able, or uh, a rookie entertainer all the way to a seasoned entertainer. Like People have to learn this. It was, you know, sometimes you just wonder, but... um, you have to be able to take that kind of um, scenario with a grain of salt, I guess, and realize that the popularity contest, you just got a bad luck at a draw that night. <laughs> like that just like you just got a bad you just got a you just got a bad roll of the dice. Yeah. I've seen I it mean, happen to every person. You never know what the reason is. Like maybe they didn't like your show specifically or or maybe they were still too sober and a lot of times some girls get intimidated by main stage so you end up you like you said you have to keep entertaining so you go on stage two you go on stage three you keep entertaining and sometimes those girls that watch on main stage and didn't go up to you wind up coming up to you on stages two and three so you definitely have to like you said kind of shrug it off your shoulders and drive on yeah besides it's the um for the competitive factor though like after that, side stage, as you think about it, you have to outdance everybody on side stage. <laughs> like, when you when you think about it, because there's girls that go in there that have their mind made up on certain guys, and then there's girls that are just looking, and they're like, well, let me see, who do I, oh, that one, oh, well, that one's not, there are some pretty choosy girls out there. And then you have to, like, you are now in a position after you've already tried to get everyone to your stage or main stage, you're now on the first side stage and then um but there's at the prime time probably three or four guys out there with you at the same time you know what i'm saying so like how do you become a star on the side yeah exactly outshine man outshine and i've seen that happen especially on a busy night where you got three guys on a side stage and uh, you guys have a little more room on your side stages. It's also a little tighter, but you definitely have to make a statement. 
you know, and, and sometimes it's, you're competing with another stage. Sometimes you're competing with the guys right next to you. And it, it's funny because it's almost like a passive aggressive thing. Like you're not straight up like stepping in front of a dude and trying to outshine him. But no. you know what I'm saying? You, if you make that eye contact and the girl's kind of looking your way, you don't know if it's for you or the guy next to you. You're going to try to do what you can to keep her attention. So you don't have to say any names, but have you ever worked with anybody like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Who's like, sure. look at me. Yeah. Uh, it happens. It's all good, man. Uh, which actually kind of leads me into my next one is uh, at the end of the night is typically when this one comes in. Like a little bit when somebody rocks the stage or whatnot. But a lot of it is off uh, indirect like income, like the way they generate it. You know, if, if the crowd is just not spending that much money uh, one evening and let's say one guy just ends up getting a couple of VIPs or something like that. it's uh, There's been several times where... You know, that guy might come to the back and be like, man, so how was y'all's night? I was stuck in VIP all night, so I didn't get to really see the crowd or anything like that. And, uh, you know, just a little bit of rub-ins, like nothing mm -hmm. bad. And or vice versa the other way. Sometimes it kind of comes in like a humble brag where, you know, one guy might walk back and be like, hey, man, I didn't even know you were here. I haven't seen you all night. Where have you been? And another guy's like, hey, man, how does VIP look? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen at the inside of VIP in a couple of days now. You know, and little things. Yeah, like no, that. no, yeah, we do that. We do do we do that as sometimes stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's... I have, I've, I've been like, I've come upstairs and been like, what? I haven't seen you all night. I forgot you're even here. Yeah, I was in VIP, man. You know, it's up black curtains all day. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, but it's a good thing. It's awesome. I mean, yeah, congrats. exactly. Because you're like, man, you know, I need to have nights like that, and so it, it pushes you to do better. And uh, it, it 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 um it shifts. It's always gonna shift. It goes around to different people, different nights, different weeks, whatever. You know, what it just happens so, that way. Somebody walking up to another guy, hey man, can you loan me tip out, bro? I I didn't I didn't get enough dances tonight, man. And then. You got, you you just got to ride the wave. You ride the wave when it's giving you a bigger wave, and you yeah. ride it right back down when it's taking away the other water. So just ride it because it's going to come right back up if you just stay on the board. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's all you got to do. True story, man. Well, to uh, wrap up this topic, man, I uh, go ahead and uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit. Like this weekend I ended up going – or past weekend, forgive me. I uh, went down for XL's Tim Burton – slash anniversary slash stripper wars event and uh triple threat <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> i mean it's slash 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 i love you slash yeah <laughs> a little bit of identity crisis event but uh you know <laughs> you and i went head to head and uh i gotta that say man it's it's uh it, we had a little bit of good banter i i had to work on my trash talking a little bit because it's it's really out of my element i'm kind of you're like, not a trash talker man you're just not Unless it's Trey, maybe him. But other than that, you're not a trash talker. Not even. I don't trash talk Trey either. I mean, I might like send in my little quips here and there, but I like to be kind of like a sniper and make my shots count. But, uh... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well the, said. Uh, the, uh... I mean, it just... I've always been one of those people where I'm like, you know what? Let me just show you what I'm about. I'm not going to say a word, and my actions will speak all that I need them to speak, you know? So... Yeah, I feel plus, that. Plus, I mean, I'll just be honest. I got so much respect for you guys. It's, it's hard for me to, like, you know, be like, oh, I'm going to walk all over you on that stage. Like, I've seen the kind of performances you do. And so it, it's difficult for me to try. I mean, I get that's the nature of trash talk, period. But still, it, it's just it's tough for me to do it. But I know it's fun. It, it generates hype. Uh, the crowds love it. And, but I mean, it says something like there's a little bit of intimidation factor and a, and a big level of, of competitiveness when you know that you're going up against people. Like I know you, Trey, Christian, Juice, Suave, you guys bring it. So I don't, I'm not going to go down to San Antonio and take it lightly unless I really have to convince myself like, okay, Caesar, you got <laughs> too much, too much on your plate right now. You're going to another town. It's going to be hard to bring props. It's going to be hard to find backup guys. Like, just go down there, support the cause, support the dudes, have a good time with your other family. And and even then, like, I still, even on the drive down there, I'm like, man, I should have brought a better act. God, this is good. We all yeah. have those moments. Those and, the whole thought process you just had, 
we've I've that sounds so familiar. Uh, yeah, but it, it's great. It's absolutely great. I go down there. I see a different kind of show that may or may not have been done at our club. You know, as far as like just uh, flavors and styles, obviously because we have different stages, different entertainers. But it's just great, man. I go out there and I'm I've done it before where girls will come up to me and they're like they want to talk to me on stage. I'm like, hold on, wait till they're done with their show. <laughs> or, you know, even during a VIP, I'll be like, hold on, let's watch this show real quick. Because you guys just bring it. And it's really inspiring. And, yeah, you might think, like, I do this weird re- reverse trash talk thing where I just hype you up too much into a false sense of security. But, man, a lot of it's just the truth, you know? So. <laughs> reverse trash talk. Yeah. I, that's I guess, funny. Uh, that's probably a horrible thing. Just like, what was it? I think. One of my first podcasts, I mentioned reverse procrastination. Someone was like, hey, Caesar, that's being productive and proactive. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess so. So I, uh, I guess I just over compliment you guys. But, I mean, it's just the truth. Like, that's all there is to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the very least, just consider the fact that I'm going to bring the best game I can just because I know you guys are worth that kind of level. And anything less is just pretty much going to look bad on me and get wrecked. I mean, uh, we appreciate your um, – we appreciate it, man. I mean, we, we're over there. Whew, man. I'm thankful for the team I have, I'll tell you that much. I am thankful. A good team is a great thing. You clearly brought the house down when you came out there. And you did it – well, you had a partner, but – in the grand scheme of things, you almost kind of did it by yourself. Almost. Like, yes, you had a partner. I mean, but that added to the difficulty of what you were doing. It wasn't like it made it... If It, it would have been easier for you to not have a partner. You know what I'm saying? You didn't go the easy route. You had a partner. <laughs> so... Um, I mean, I don't know. It's pretty stuff. It's pretty tough to take down any kind of competition on your own in our line of work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it is. Like, and she's just a phenomenal performer. Like, I mean, she can take, she can captivate the entire house. She did a great job. Y'all did a great job, but y'all um, brought another element to the show that, in the long run, it appears as if I just couldn't compete with it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has their specialty. You hit me with a finisher move, man. (laughs) I wouldn't go that far, man. Shoot, I was sitting there watching your whole routine before me. I mean, I was hiding behind the curtain. That's how bad I wanted to see it. I was like, look, I know I always have to prep for my show, but I ended up missing the best ones because they're before me. So I was literally, I don't know if you saw me or not, because I was creeping. Like, So I was like, are you in this routine? I'm like, no, man, I just want to see it. So I like... I like hid behind the curtain, like as far back into the corner as I could to kind of peek and watch you and stuff. As soon as I say, as soon as the music starts, I don't see anything. Like it all, it's just, I see the act. I don't see anything. It's just it's a snap. As soon as I, you remember me saying I have like a word that I say when I'm about to just, everything else is about to just be, when I'm about to get that tunnel vision. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I that, I, when I say the word snap, right before the music starts, it's just the act. I'm in the act. Like that's, that. there it is. Any Anything else, it has to be really extreme to break me out of it. Because uh, things are going to go wrong sometimes, and you have to be able to continue. And if you're not fully in touch with everything around you, then something out of your control will take you out of your zone. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Something minor that could be played off will be turned into something catastrophic. If you can be turned into something catastrophic, if you're not completely into what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I well. remember you being back there. I remember you being back there in the corner. I just acknowledged you were there and then was like, snap. No, so, no. It, and you executed flawlessly, man. Like the choreography, all five dudes were on point. You were rocking that cane and the shoes. Like 
<laughs> I was mad impressed, man. Mad impressed. Like, no lie. <laughs> like, I couldn't have brought anything less and felt like I deserved to be on that stage. You know what I'm saying? If I brought anything less than my very best, I wouldn't have deserved to just share a stage with you. I completely forgot about the cane. You were in the zone. I got it. That thing, man. You gotta be careful with that thing. You can slide out. It'll slide out your hand. It's dangerous. I've hit Suave multiple times. Taking one for the team in choreography, right? I yeah. always hit him because he's tall. Understandable. Yeah. We always hit each other. <laughs> we always like boom, but we just keep going. It happens. It's happened multiple times. If we don't hit each other, it's not gonna be a good show. Yeah, I got you. All right, man. Well, shoot. I uh, I think that's gonna be enough for our topic this week. Uh, kind of dabbled in things and hope everyone enjoyed it. Got the point across. I think we covered a wide spectrum. It's it's funny because hold on, hold on, hold on. I have one more question before you cut it down. I got one more question. Yeah, go ahead. I man. need, I need, I need your, I need your. Uh, how do I say this? You man, you know how I just told you what I see whenever. I am about to do my act. Mm -hmm. I need to hear what you're thinking and mm -hmm. what is going through your mind, like what you're seeing whenever you're about to do those silks. Like what do you say to yourself right before it starts? How do you begin it? You know, that kind of thing. As much as you want to tell me or tell everyone, not you don't have to give away everything, but... Like, Shoot, man, I'm getting dang personal with this. All right, um, I'll be honest with you, man. I uh, I think I can't really recollect exactly if I do something unique with silks or not. I mean, obviously, I have to do a little bit of mental fortification because I'm afraid of heights. So every time I get about two climbs up there, I start to get a little uh, nervous, which is actually fun fact. I'll, I'll sidetrack real quick and go back to the question. But uh, when I was choreographing or when we were choreographing the uh, routine, to, to perform down there, I knew it was more than La Bear, and I thought it was closer to what the practice studio had. So we choreographed the routine based on that amount of height. We worked in a couple of drops and things like that, a little more dynamic of a routine that you can do with the height. And we get down there Sunday afternoon to set up the rig and go ahead and start checking everything and run rehearsals. and right off the bat i jump on stage and i'm like that is not nearly as tall as i thought it was mm -hmm. and i guess just my a combination of only being on those silks one time before or prior and just being afraid of height so it always throws me off when i get up there i just assumed that it was significantly higher than it really was so we end up having to improv scrap half of uh, the choreography and end up going to a new year's routine that we already had done with a few modifications for that night because uh, obviously we didn't want to entirely redo a whole new thing on the spot. But yeah, so that's funny. Thing. But it's crazy. Uh, to go back to your original question, man, um, I don't really say anything. I don't really kind of get in the zone. The only thing that I can really say that I feel I do on a regular basis is I kind of ground myself, kind of let my roots kind of sink into the ground and just kind of be ready to be the performer that I want to be, but I also envision myself reaching out, those roots reaching out, energy flowing through me and touching each person out in the crowd and mm. kind of linking us all and letting that vibe, that emotion, that feeling that I want to portray on stage radiate and vibrate from me to each person in the crowd. No, I guarantee you I've seen it not work. Uh, especially when someone's like, okay, I think this is time for a spoke break or this is time for me to go to the bathroom or stay on their Snapchat. Mm. But at least before I go on stage, that's at least the two things I know for a fact I do every time. One, ground myself because going on that stage is never easy. And two is just visually and mentally, emotionally connecting myself to every person, the DJ, the dancers, the waiters, the females in the crowd and just making it to where I see them connect with me and so they give me their excitement their happiness their you know enjoyment and I give them the same thing back that makes then, a lot of sense makes oh, a lot God. of sense because I've watched you 
And that is exactly what you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm glad you think so. I've seen, yeah, man. It takes a certain type of person to do that. Especially when you do it by you do it by yourself a lot, too. That's another thing. You do it by yourself a lot. Like I've seen you go places and you don't have any backup. You're just like, eh, I'll do this. And then I mean, you you do you. I mean, it's a good, it's, it's almost about as pure as you can get for, if I could, you know, sass it up a little bit when, you know, you could say what you want. You've heard of guys going on stage with five dudes Mm -hmm. doing a bomb routine. And then as soon as the routine's done, like the energy just drops, you know? Oh yeah. And, Mm -hmm. and so don't get me wrong. I still, honestly, there's reasons why I prefer a group. There's reasons why I prefer solo and stuff. But when you're on there by yourself from start to finish, like there's no excuses, there's no anything. They're judging your body, they're judging your choreography, they're judging your attitude, your look, your smile. Everything is you and you can't, you know, share the blame or anything like that. And then you can also own the success as well. And and so there's something to that. You got to have, you know, I will admit half half the time they end up doing something solo, it's by necessity, not by choice, but you know, I'm not, I'm not afraid to do it and um it's rewarding when it pays off it's 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 really rewarding uh multiple levels and i know you've experienced that as well because i mean case in point you came up to dallas um for new year's i believe and ended up Mm -hmm. doing your rock routine for the reality show and Mm -hmm. immediately i was getting feedback off of what an amazing entertainer you were why you were still on stage like people were stopping midway to talk to me and then go to your stage so you know you you have that energy that fire that does the same thing and it's definitely a badge that every entertainer should earn at some point just even for the self gratification of knowing that they're capable of that Mm -hmm. man man that feels good i'm glad you told me that I wasn't aware that people were so stoked on that uh, rock routine. Oh, yeah. Especially, I mean, especially because I didn't have my black penny loafers with me. I know. It's a shame. You rock those penny loafers like nobody's business. It was, <laughs> it was, it was actually really funny because in when I was editing the reality show on that clip, uh, when you're done, you can hear XL being like, that needs to be a routine. And I heard like two other guys and – I actually say things as well of like, where has that been this whole time? And so it was really cool. Obviously I had to edit it out for the show. So if you haven't checked it out, go to my uh, YouTube, Caesar LeBear and check out my crowd pleaser contest. Mandigo was one of the three finalists on the show and he absolutely murdered it week after week after week. If you don't know the kind of entertainer this man is definitely go on the show and check it out. But all right, man. I'm honored. We digress once again. Let's uh, appreciate the si- appreciate the in depth question, though, man. I, I hope people really enjoy that because uh, that might actually be a podcast later on down the line. I might actually ask all the guys what their uh, pre show routine is and see I've, what people say. I felt like we shouldn't have ended without that. I mean, it wouldn't have been right for me to just say mine. And I mean, people are gonna be like, "Well, what about his?" You know what I'm saying? Like yours, especially considering you're the host, you know, yours is very important view to have. It's it's also just nice to kind of pick the brains of other entertainers on certain things that we don't always talk about as well. No, true story. True story, man. No, it was it was a good question. It's something that I've I've done more often than not. Don't get me wrong. I miss it every once in a while if I got to go up in a hurry or something like that. Uh, I'll be honest. The one of the – here's a little tidbit I'll go ahead and throw out. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have an open arms routine where we come out in towels and mm-hmm. we take our underwear off and dance on the girl and stuff like that. You know, like we show right. our underwear in the towel. We put the towel back on. We take our underwear off. And I kid you not, man, I have this huge – paranoia that like because i'm just bad at tying towels around my waist and so every single time it comes to me having to do that routine like i have to mentally prepare myself just a little bit more because i'm like it's gonna be okay man you're gonna keep the towel on take the underwear off just fine you're not gonna mess this up so uh 
up until the point where I get the underwear off, the towel's still around me. I get to wave it in the air. Like I've got a little bit of a pucker factor going on. So there you go. There's a little bit extra snippet for everyone out there. I'm sure people are getting a good laugh out of that. Um, so yeah. I don't know if you guys. I mean, have it's, anything it's like always that. there's always a risk when there's a towel involved. True story. True story, man. Towels are one of our worst enemies. Plus, a random drunk girl that gets a little too close to stage. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Take it off. Wow, you hit that tone perfectly. I right. hear it all the time. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I you're doing all these pirouettes. I just hear somebody go, "Take it off." I'm like, ugh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, trust me. I, I feel your pain, brother, man. All right, so on that note, uh, what was your worst event of the week, man? You're less than great. It was a weird shift. And, well, I guess it's not that weird considering the circumstances. This whole week, um, I love being able to entertain in front of a group of people. Yes, it is more money when there's more people in there, obviously. But there's a certain amount of energy that the crowd can provide for you as well as you provide energy for the crowd. So if there's a large group of people and they're providing you energy, that's awesome. If there's a large group of people and you provide them energy, that's also awesome. So um, I would say that it was I was a little perturbed to see how um, much the crowds were kind of, at least in this area, dwindling just a little bit. And I believe the holidays have a lot to do with it. You know, there's a holiday on Sunday. Um, yeah, and and uh, the Final Four is over here in San Antonio. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. We got a couple. There's a couple people that came in for that, but it wasn't uh, downtown. Let's just say downtown was very busy. So, I mean, like I said, you're going to have those moments, uh, but for me, that was what, yeah, that was my worst part of the week was just the fact that um, I didn't have the audience I would have liked. Nothing major. I just, you know what I'm saying? We did not have the audience that I would have liked. Yeah, so you guys didn't see an influx of people that have come into town for the Final Four show up? I mean, I get it. Like, I understand that, you know, ladies clubs are, are not the most natural instinct for people to go to or first option but i was still kind of surprised because i know at libera from time to time we do get people uh ladies that are in town for certain conventions and things like that they end up like hey we heard about this place so we we decided to come out so i guess you guys didn't kind of see that from the final four no you typically have um you're not really gonna have people looking to go to ladies clubs who are coming into town for um sports like that because i mean you might you i mean you might like i guess more people in town is a good um is a good like uh i don't want to say the word buffer like when you think about it the more people in town the better i suppose mm -hmm. but you have people who are in town and their minds are made up on what they're going to do already you know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, yeah, I'm all comes. I'm going to San Antonio. I'm going to go see the Alamo. I'm going to the Riverwalk. I'm going to go to Dick's on the Riverwalk. Pay somebody to talk noise to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they people have, like, I'm going to go see some lights. Like, they have, I'm going to go ride around in the country in Texas, go, like, 20 miles outside of San Antonio and see what it has to offer. Like, people have their mind made up on certain things already. Yeah, you I know what I mean. I, yeah, I see what you're saying. When they come into town, especially when they're going to spend majority of their day involved in an NCAA in the NCAA events. Yeah. So well, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm picking it up. Yeah, man. Well, shoot. Uh, ironically, my uh, less than great event of the week is actually when I was down in uh, San Antonio visiting you guys. Uh oh. Excuse me. So while I was down there, uh, I had a couple of friends that were there. So obviously I, I went and said hello and stuff to them. And while I was doing that, I, uh, I, and I'm so adamant about this in my club. Like it really is a pet peeve of mine. And I've been trying to start a movement to eliminate it. But um, so on side stage, I happened to, to catch uh, two ladies at a table. One was filming. And... 
I asked XO, like, hey, do you allow that? Because if not, I'm going to go talk to him. And he said, yeah, yeah, we sadly allow that right now. We're working on it, but right now it's allowed. I was like, okay, well, it's not my club, so I'm not going to you know, ruin anyone's feelings or anything like that. Not that I was going to be mm-hmm. rude about it, but but of course yeah, I, I identified it, and I stood, it stood out to me. So throughout the night, I ended up watching both these girls record practically every single dude that went on stage, every show. To the point where they were passing the phone back and forth to each other so they can keep the phone on. One of them went as far as Facebook Live. Like she was Mm. literally live broadcasting the show. And man, I got to be honest with you. It really, really bugs me. Like I have come to terms with pictures and I think that's fine. As long as they don't post like horrible pictures, because you know what I'm talking about. People will just take yeah. some happy snaps of you in mid dance move, which the dance move itself might have looked awesome, but <laughs> they catch you at the wrong spot in a body roll or a twist, <laughs> and you just got this look on your face, or your body looks all contorted, and then that's what they post, and they're like, "Hey, look, no, I saw exactly. this super amazing stripper," and people are like, "What the heck is he doing?" Um, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yes. But the the Facebook Live thing like really kind of irked me a little bit because I feel like and, – and, and the kicker to this, the caveat is is that I believe – and I could be wrong because I didn't watch them all night. But I believe that each one of them tipped one entertainer and that was it. And so like I felt it was a little disrespectful where they felt the need to broadcast every single show that went on but only financially show support and appreciation for – one or two individuals like i don't think that was necessarily fair and it's so they're in the club not necessarily showing appreciation to everyone but then they're also preventing or stopping x amount of people from coming to the club because they're like well if i could stay home in bed and watch the show at hard bodies why should i go out there mm-hmm. and you know it, judge me however you will for that the but whole really, show but it really bugged me. It really did. And so that kind of put a bad taste in my mouth um, to the point where when I actually got done with my uh, aerial routine, uh, I literally happened to be facing right at one of them and she was filming. And I was like, look, you know, please no recording. And I will give her credit. She stopped recording at that point. When she had started, I have no idea. But sure enough, she felt my uh, our show was good enough to record, but didn't come up and tip. So, you know what I mean? Um, It kind of put a bad taste in my mouth, and that was pretty much my worst event of the week. Now, the flip side to that, though, uh, was my best event of the week. That was, uh, once again, in San Antonio visiting, and I know it's, it's hard to get a Sunday off or Sunday night off when you have to work Monday morning, and I actually had... Mm -hmm. uh, a family of friends come out as well as a really good friend of mine uh, and help. Uh, she actually helped film uh, some of the routines that evening and stuff like that. So two of my friends, long story short, they came out, made the time to come out and support my show as well as y'all's show and just come out and have a good time. And it's always great because I want to see XL's events and y'all's events build up the best crowd that they can. And they're really nice people. They dressed in theme and it was just great. I really appreciated them coming out while I was in town to support me because it's always nice to travel and see familiar faces. So shout out to them for being the best event of my week. Dun-dun-dun. Very nice. How about you, brother? What was your best event? Our battle. Oh, all right. Fair enough. I could roll with that. I'm saying that because, um, well, lately, the last few months, uh, anybody who knows me, and watches me consistently will know that I've been very distracted. It's very difficult for me to share my creative space with dancing and trying to make music. So there's times where I just have to pull off from dancing and and make music and kind of just coast with what I have already. Because I, I want to... It, now, it's nice to be able to bounce back and forth and go back to dancing and be like, all right, let me create some here. But it, when I'm doing that, it serves as a break for me from music and it allows for a little bit of serendipity with the music. You know what I'm saying? So I've been balancing both of those things. But when uh, I prepared for um, Sunday, it showed me that I was still very much in touch with who the, uh, 
who like I was as an entertainer. You know what I'm saying? The preparation for it and everything. Granted, um, we end. I didn't end up winning the battle, but I was very in touch with the crowd that night. It's oh, just I very think, nice. I think it was really close, man. To be honest with you, I would make the argument that you actually had the latter applause. Just saying. I mean, well, we can always do a rematch. True story. True story. We can. I don't know if I'll be able to top you again, but. <laughs> And then, I, I would make the argument that I didn't top you. I just hit it from a different angle. It's a good point. Hey, man, the people have spoken. You are the victor. For me, I do. I do know that we can, we can reschedule, or we can do another battle at any point in time. Well, maybe not any point in time because you know we all got a lot of stuff going on. But we can actually make that happen. But to reiterate, the fact that. I felt like I was really in touch with the crowd that night and that I reminded, I, I, I kind of reminded myself what I'm capable of on the stage. Mm -hmm. I've been, it's not like I've been slacking. It's just like I've pulled off from that specifically and going back to actually taking the time to create something. I have a lot, I have more in store Especially for May. May is going to be a fun one. But actually taking the time to create and focus on a routine. Because other people were popping out routines when I was sitting there writing music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm just sitting here like, competitive factor. Oh, y'all wait till I switch back over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, y'all just wait. In a friendly way, of course. Like, of course, y'all are gonna love this. It's competitive. It's exactly what we've been talking about all show. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. good though. It's like you said. You get to change gears, kind of go into cruise control for a little bit. You know, go to hit the music, hit that song, and then when you come back, you're, it's almost refreshed. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Well, sweet man, that's great. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, I'm glad I could be a part of your best event. That definitely. Is a compliment. It's a high point. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and wrap things up, man. It's getting late for both of us. So uh, how can people reach you on social media, man? Uh, you can find me um, as Mandingo Jones on Facebook. Send me a friend request or support my local, uh, my music page, Heaney, H-E-N-E. -E. Um, you can also find me on Instagram, Heaney Train. H E N E uh T R A I N. Um there's no underscore, there's no space, there's no forward slash, no hyphen, none of that. Heaney train. That's how you find me on Instagram. Once again, Mandingo Jones on Facebook or just Heaney for my music page as well. Cool. And on your music page you have all your releases and stuff like that, right? Um I have information about upcoming events i have a few releases on there from older ones but a lot of my newer ones are still in the process of being prepared to be released okay so i actually i actually also have a website that's still being formatted um heneytrain.com basically <laughs> so that's um in the works right now but you can find me on soundcloud at uh h-e-n-e -E dash train um, you can find me on Audio Mac as well. Just search Heaney or Heaney Train and I'll come up. Um, everything you'll also see that on my Instagram and my music page as well. They're all they're all linked together pretty well. So you'll be able to follow me fairly easily. Sweet, man. All right. For me, Cesar Coyasso on Facebook. That is C-O-L-L-A-Z-O. Find me on Instagram or Twitter at CaesarLaBear7. You can also hit up my website, www.caesarthecrowdpleaser.com. has all my reality shows, podcasts, uh, photos, all that stuff is on there. And I uh, should be uploading it with aerial stuff, uh, some fire stuff, and uh, cosplay things. So definitely keep in touch there. It's going to be my central hub for everything I do. Definitely check out my Patreon again, uh, patreon.com slash crowdpleaser. Uh, check that out. <clears throat> All right. 
That's pretty much it. We'll call that show. Mandingo, appreciate you taking the time to be on the show, man. Thank you so much. No problem. All right. And to everyone out there, keep bringing the rain. I am focused. I'm in my zone. You can binge watch like Game of Thrones. Reserve your judgments. Don't throw no stones. Who's in my scream as loud as you go? Airplane mode on tablets and phones. Caesar's crowd pleases. It's now on. Caesar. The crowd pleaser. If you need to pick me up, ladies, we gon' change your demeanor. Caesar, the crowd pleaser. We gon' do a little dance, we gon' make the naysayers believers.